Shoot it to the left, hunker down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse. I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this episode of What a Horse. Because of time conflicts, appointment conflicts, Tommy's at the doctor's office. Uh, we have other people involved with the show that has appointments on other times during the day. So this week... You're stuck with me, all by myself. But we do have a lot to report this week. We got some new shows that are working on coming up. We got a great interview with Mr. Eli Leverett, one of the young guns in the industry. And we're going to go through all of that along with some old footage of old shows. Uh, just a whole lot to look at, talk about. And we'll start that when we come back from this short commercial break. Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety, and KB Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. Six-time world champion in amateur and open competition, four-time amateur world grand champion, and 2019 world grand champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dow at Fantasy Farm in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Call 931-389-6983 for breeding information. Come on, come all, that's the motto at the new Feed for All store on Highway 64 East. Feed for All is family owned and operated by Christy and Eddie Guthrie along with their son Joe. This family will be available to serve your daily needs for all your agriculture animal feeds. Their goal is to provide feed in bulk or buy the bag wherever it is needed and will always be a phone call away. Christy and Eddie have always been very selective in the quality of the feed their animals were fed and their satisfaction with the Feed for All products is their guarantee. You will be satisfied as well. Watch your horses come running when you break out the Feed for All horse feed. Give Feed for All a call today at 931-492-4609 or stop by their store located at 2392 Highway 64 East in Shelbyville, Tennessee and pick up a load of feed today. Joe is ready to load it for you. Uh, feed for all! So good! Let's return back to Jerry Harris and his guests on Water Horse. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and Mr. Williams is wrong today because I don't have a guest. I don't even have a co-announcer, co-host, whatever you want to call it. But I do have some announcements. Sugar Creek will happen. Now, that used to be Rising Stars. Now, Sugar Creek, David Williams purchased it. It's going to have a first look barn party on February the 5th, and it's going to start at 10, 10 a.m. in the morning. It's going to be catered by Rowdy Ranch. That promises to be good because they're allowing anybody to bring horses by any stud. Makes no difference who, who is the actual stud of the horse. They just want you to bring your horses, let people see them, and see where we're headed for 2022. You can contact David Williams at 931-639-1081. Uh, then, we were going to have a blue ribbon sale 
That has been canceled, and it is now going to be a Lane Leverett barn party. Going to be on the 19th. Uh, going to probably start about 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, you can call Lane Leverett at 931-675-1261. This promises to be a very good day. Uh, a lot of horses will be there, but he's going to restrict it to nothing but two-year-olds which is pretty good. Other news that we have, which I'm very excited about, is uh, Bobby Ballou, uh watched, in which he did an interview with us, but then he got to thinking and he talked to some other people about the old shows. So they are going to try to bring back the Summertown show, and they're looking at a target date June the 11th. This is one of our oldest shows. Matter of fact, that's one of the first shows that Tommy Williams ever announced was the Summertown show. For people that have there, we're going to show some video of this old show a little later. But this is, this is vital. I'm going to tell you how important it is. We have different people that have decided to jump in and clean up the track of Fix the track. Mike Floyd out of Columbia said he would go down and put the track back. Bobby said a lot of people are jumping in, talking about coming, dressing the track back up to where the way it used to be. So th this is a big, to me, this is something very big, very important, because it's bringing back some of our history of the small shows. And these people down there, they're getting ready for the show. They work hard. And I can remember going there, and I always enjoyed it because it was that country country atmosphere, the Lions Club in there, cooking, serving, ladies, the men, everybody. They, it's just a, as Lane Leverett said, when the lights go on in a community, people come. And that's what this is all about. This is getting them down. And Mike Floyd offering to fix the track. Bobby Blue says he's more than willing they're talking to the Pony Club to see if, if everything's going to work out all right. And to me, that, that's, that's an important, important thing to happen, is if we can bring this show back, it would be good. Other things going on, there are only eight events right now with show this year that is listed so far with show. So I'm sure that's going to pick up because there's a ton of shows scheduled on the reports page. Uh, the tennis team out of Shelbyville, Tennessee, they're going to start a new show. So, and that's going to be at the Ag Center, which I'm looking forward to it. If we look back through the years, we've lost a lot of shows. In 2015, we lost the Gallatin show, mainly because the Lions Club had dwindled down in members. And that happens a lot because in communities, things change. People change. But that show was always a great show. I'd love to see it come back. I'd love to see someone jump on there and uh, talk because it canceled in 2015 after 57 years. Now think about it. 57 years of having shows. 2015 was the last time they had it. And Eagleville's last show, I believe, was in 2015 when Lonnie Messick judged. But now I've talked to some people down there, and we're kind of talking about Hall's Mill, having one down there, which I think would be a great place to have a show. And we got some other news. We've got one of our own in the walking horse industry, a beautiful young lady, which we have had right here on the Water Horse Show, and that is Jaden Jackson. And she went to the Tennessee Ferris pageant, and here she is. She did a fantastic job. She represented Bedford County, the walking horse industry, the fair. Great. I am Jaden Jackson, and I'm representing the Bedford County Fair. I really like that outfit she's got on. It looked great. But she's not only a beauty queen, she is a business lady, plus the fact that she, uh, she is great on horseback, winning several blue ribbons with, in the walking horse industry, doing a fantastic job.
tell you what, to be first runner-up is a fantastic honor for a great young lady that, uh, and like I said, she represented the walking horse industry well. She did a great job. Uh, we're tickled to death far. And if Tommy was here, he would be over here having a fit. This is Jack Heffington's granddaughter. Jack is the president of the Walking Horse Breeders and Exhibitors in Lewisburg, Tennessee. But like I say, she, uh, I'm very proud and honored that uh, this young lady did such a fantastic job for Bedford County. And here she is just to show you she knows how to ride a horse, ladies and gentlemen. She can get it done. Like I say, Jaden did a fantastic job representing Bedford County about as well as it could be represented. First runner up. Also, we have been talking to the young guns in the industry, which that is our future. So I went out to Lane Leverage because he has a young gun out there that has uh, started a lot of Colts and shows very little, but when he does show, he makes an impact. Here's some video of that. I am here now with, uh, let me see, how we introduce Eli. <laughs> he is the rider at Lane Leverett and Son Staples. Is that correct? Yes, sir. You're the one to do the breaking? Yes, sir. How many do you break a year? Uh, anywhere from 40 to 50 a year, probably, I'd say. But now, you you show some, too. I, I know we, we've seen you several times in the show ring, but I've seen you on a lot of them out here. Some of them go on. People come in, buy them, right yes, and left. Sir. Your daddy pays you top commission too, right? Yes, sir. I figured he would. Yes, sir. He takes care of me pretty good, yeah. He makes it worth it, I'll tell you he that. Make, he makes it worthwhile. Yes, sir. Which ones are your top ones right now, just just roughly? Uh, Probably Honors and a Jose Coke. Like that and standing right there? Yes, sir. They're, yes, over sir. There They're over there trimming him, and he is, I'm going to say he's a beautiful coat. Yes, sir. And he he really is. We got Tim Webb out here a shoeing. Got cleanup duty. So today is cleanup duty because it's so cold, right? Yes, sir. You don't want to get these things sick and be off of them for a while, sir. Well, that's what your dad and I was talking about. You can show them, ride them today, and then be off two weeks, or you let them off a day, and you don't miss anything. It warms back up. You got the weekend coming, so everything's cool. And they'll pick back up where they left off when you start back. You know, they'll, they'll be all right. Well, tell me, how long have you been riding? Oh, uh, probably about seven years now. And how old are you? 20. 21. 21? Yes, sir. So since you was 14. Yes, sir. Well, he broke you in early, didn't early. he? <laughs> Every day I get out of school, I'd go over there and ride coats in the afternoon, and we'd go home, and then when I got out of school, I started it full time. I've been doing it ever since. Hey, I don't blame you. You know, a lot of, it's good to follow in your father's footsteps. Now, it really is. And I'm sure the different people that he's had out here, the education is good, too. Yes, sir. Because, Lord, People think that you can just jump on one of these horses. No, sir. It's not like it. It's not as easy. It's a lot of work that goes to it. you got to have a, the right blacksmith. And I, we was talking this morning about training a horse is kind of funny because you can shoe him and you can have a little too much or a little too little. And the trick is to find the right spot. Yes, sir. And when you find the right spot, that's special. Who, who have you learned the most from? It's my dad. My You're dad. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't work without both of us. It's a. It's a team thing. We do it together, and it's always been that way. Well, that. I mean, that's a good thing. That if work. If you can work with your father, 
And I tell, I'm going to tell you something right now. You're 21 years old, and I'll tell you this, and this is God's truth if I ever told it. If you love what you're doing, you'll never work a day in your life. That's right. <laughs> That's a fact. I enjoy it every day of it. No. Well, I'm going to let you get back to showing or riding or getting horses ready today, but we're going to be showing some video of you. And I believe over at Cornersville last year, you, you had three or four wins over there. Uh, I won on the two-year-old Marion Gildens class on delinquent, and then I won uh, Show Pleasure on uh, Got Your Back. Uh, and, but you placed pretty good in a couple more over there, I remember, because we had one over there that, that you, you won that class, and another one, you were second or third. Elijah Leverett is riding. Raleigh, Mississippi. Elijah Leverett and Delinquent 239 to the blue. Let's take a look at the Delinquent. Elijah Leverett riding in with Kim Robinson in the lane. Raleigh, Mississippi. Blue River winner in Cornersville and the two year old man. Yeah, Look good on a horse. Corey got your back. Elijah Leverett is riding. Step to White on Sandra. Yeah, Eli. White Sandra got your back with Elijah Leverett up to the blue 240 the number. I know Lane Leverett is proud of him. Getting her done. Yeah, well, you had a good, good had a outing. Good show. That's real good. Eli, I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you, Thank you much. No Look forward to seeing you in the show ring again. All right. Eli's a fine young man, and he does. Every time you go out there, Eli's on a horse. He's riding. He's showing. He's getting it done. And his, all his dad just does is point and point. We're going to have to talk to him about maybe getting Eli raised, uh, buying him a brand-new dually truck, you know, something. So Lane's going to be mad. I better go to commercial. So we're going to pause for our commercial break right quick, and we'll be right back. Thank you. A Jim DeWin started his career under the guidance of Herbert Derrickson, winning his first outing as a two-year-old in Manchester, Tennessee. After a great two-year-old season, Jim would win his first outing as a three-year-old. He was then purchased by Harold Roberts. Harold won a competitive amateur class with him, then turned the reins over to trainer Blaze Picard, who would win both the World Championship and World Grand Championship three-year-old classes. This would be followed by Kendra Myers winning the amateur four-year-old Grand Championship, and then Jen would go on to win World Championships in both amateur and open show pleasure divisions. With World and World Grand Championships in both open and amateur divisions, the decision was made to stand this talented black stallion in honor of the man who saw his greatness, Harold Roberts. A Jen DeWin is now standing at Sugar Creek in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Make an appointment to breed your mare today, 931-680-0897. Tired of paying for monthly telephone service, expensive long-distance bills, and all those crazy taxes? Are you sick of spending money on telephone equipment, maintenance contracts, and service calls, all for a phone system that shackles you to 100-year-old technology and your desk? Stop it. It's time to ship your phone system to the cloud. What can the cloud do for you? Bring together remote offices, workers, and employees in the field. Make sure that you'll never miss calls by delivering them to multiple devices. Modernize faxing by allowing multiple faxes to be sent and received at once. And deliver to email. Get your voicemail messages instantly through email, too. And take advantage of an endless supply of customizable features. Host My Calls can deliver the cloud. All of this technology with low upfront costs and not one penny in capital expense. It's time for a phone solution you'll truly love from Host My Calls. Call the number below. The Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect horse to bring a family together for fun-filled days and nights of competition. From the youngest and the smallest in the family to the oldest and the biggest, the Tennessee Walking Horse provides an avenue for the entire family to enjoy competing together. 
If you ride one today, you will own one tomorrow. I don't want anybody to forget the winner circle. They have free shipping for any order over $100, and they do support our industry on a regular basis. So please remember the winner circle when you're getting your equine needs. Let's get back to Water Horse and watch some more videos. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You know, when you go to Lane Leverett's barn, you, you see a lot of horses and you see a lot of different people. But I could not resist the opportunity to get an interview with not only Lane, but one of the blacksmiths of bar industry, Mr. Tim Webb. So let's go and watch an interview where we got Tim Webb caught in the middle. And I'm at Lane Leverett's. Seems like we spend a lot of time out here, but there's a lot of good coats out here to look at. And one of the reasons is this man right here, Mr. Tim Webb. He can, he can flat put a shoe on one. They yeah. call him the mysterious blacksmith. Is that a good name for you? I, I guess so. Lane, you got some news for us, so tell us what it is. February 19th, it's our fifth annual barn party. Oh, we'll be serving brunch, starting about 10 o'clock, be serving brunch. Might have a few Bloody Marys, a few Mimosas out here, and uh, probably gonna be one of the bigger, bigger ones we've had, so. Well, I'm looking forward to that. I know we were gonna have a, a sale, but now we're gonna just have a, a good old- Good old fashioned party. barn party. Just everybody come out, have a good time, and yes, eat, sir. camaraderie. You might even get to meet Tim Webb out here. He's something. Now, he Look. missed my last one. Don't tell me you Could did. Did you believe that? I, I got here late. You don't like Bloody Marys, do you? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I knew Most it. of my end. <laughs> All right. Well, I always do something. You've got a lot of good ones out yes, here sir. right now. Like, yeah, we're, we're very, very, very lucky. Uh, very blessed. Well, you shared some news with me which really tickled me about Bobby Ballou. So yes, he, sir. He watches his cell phone TV, mm -hmm. and then he decides it's time to have a horse show. I like that. He is absolutely eat up with it. We, he watched the episode you did last week with me and Billy Young, and when we was talking about some of the old hall shows being gone, he went back to the Lions Club in Lawrenceburg and said, hey, we're putting this show back on. So that's one more, that's one more show we're going to get back. They're going to put it on pro either at Lawrenceburg or Summertown. They're trying to get it, get it all together. Well, well, I'd be honest. I'd love to see it at Summertown for one reason. I, I feel like it's going to be there. When, when you look at Summertown, that was a unique country show. It's kind of like Mount Pleasant. I mean, you, you've got the building there where people go in to eat. You've got the Lions Club serving food. You, and you got the bleak. It, it's just, I don't know, it's just something about it that makes you think of the horse shows the way they've progressed like through they the used, years. So yep. I'm looking forward but to that. But they're, uh, they, you know, they, they cook. They do a lot of uh, different food concessions. Their Lions Club does a lot of things for that. And, you know, that show was pretty big. It used to be real huge. So, but he, he's, he's eat up with it now. He's, he's went and told them we're going to put this show back on and, and they're trying, they're looking for the date right now. He asked, when do you want, when's a good time? I said, May or June, any time in there. That way your weather gets out of the way in April. We need some more little ones like that. We, we need some of them one night shows. I remember growing up when you go to a one night show, it was so crowded, elbow to elbow, horses in the ring. I remember Lan Manchester one Saturday night, 23 in the three-year-old class, 23. That's the year Empire Maker won it. Empire Maker? Yeah. That's a long time. I mean, time, that's man. a long time you ago. Age right there. Hey, well, I'm, I'm older in mud. Put a, little, put a little water on the dirt and you got a big mud pile, buddy. But now that, that's how long it's been. And I can remember down in Eagleville, they was 27 mm -hmm. or 28 in the flat shot class. So it, the, these are shows that we need brought back bad. Yes, sir. We need more of them. We need, well, you brought something up the last time we talked about the community getting involved. In these small towns is where the community is getting involved, mm -hmm. like War Trace, Lynchburg. I'd love to see Lynchburg Lynchburg's come back. Uh, we have Mount Pleasant. That's another good one. But these, these a little bit knowledgeable. There used to be a great show in knowledgeable. You know, 
these horse shows go on in Lawrenceburg, Lynchburg. There's some little girl, little boy, and it'll happen somewhere every year. There's a little boy, little girl that's going to come to that horse show. Man, I sure would like to do that one day, Daddy. Well, you know what? My grand, her granddaddy heard her say that. He's sitting there with that bib overalls on with that big wad, you know, and you don't think he's got nothing. Next thing you know, he's done bought her he a done horse. Bought one. And that's where we get our our people back in the industry that we've lost over the years. And new ones. The, the everyday blue collar people, new people, people. There's a lot of people that could do this that, that kind of got out of sync with it. We go back to having them shows. Uh, I've said it time and time again. A horse show indoors don't help nothing. When you have them outside and them lights them come lights on, on, people come yeah, to see what's happening. You said that last time. And it, it, when them I lights come it. on, they come to see whether it's a football game, a world's fair, county fair, or a horse show. People will come when they see something happen. Kind of like the fireworks. That's right? right. And you're right. Jerry Williams here recently has sold two ladies, one of them in their 70s, a horse because they want to get back into showing. Gwen, Lucky Collins, Mary, sold it. Mm -hmm. to a lady and she's going to show it this year. So there's people out there uh, that... Just yesterday, you know, I got a friend of mine, Lizzie Murfreesboro, he's a contractor up there. He calls me yesterday and said, my girl wants to get into showing horses. She always wants to show a walking horse. Come over, we're going to put her on one and we'll find her something. All right, here we come. You know, strange you said that, because it, and this is a true story. I was sitting watching TV the other night and I get a phone call and it's a guy I've known for years. He, his name is Mickey. He calls and he says, Jerry said, my son wants a horse. Who should I go to? And now he's, he's want one for trail riding or you know just country boy show or something, but that's the place they start. I mean, yeah. that's where you start. And more and more people that started out in that flat shot going to a trail ride and then decided, well, my horse good enough, I want to show him Saturday night. And a lot of these flat shot that ride them horses today, take them a show that night. Mm -hmm. so. I'm, I'm tickled with Bobby Ballou. I'm going to have to oh, get yeah. with him because that's a good form. Hey, yeah, I've known him for years, but this, this putting this show back on in Summertown, I think would be be fantastic. It's going to happen. Well, there's, there's a group here in Shelbyville. Uh, students are putting one on at the Ag Center to raise money for, I think it's the tennis club, I believe. It's, it's one of the clubs at the high school that are going to put on a show. I need to get with them and check him. Yeah, sure. I've seen that. But that, that's going to be good. That's another show that we need. And they they bring in back the the horseplay show. I helped them last year. This year they're doing it by themselves. They're going to have it back over in Manchester. When they see they're going to start back making money again, they'll start having it. Well, more and more horses that go, the better off we're going that's to be. Right. Well, I tell you what, if you want a horse shod, see this guy right here. If Lane will let him leave long enough. If you need a two-year-old right now, come out here and talk to Lane. If not, we'll have one because we're going to try our best to live stream the 19th. And y'all want to buy a horse, just call me. I'll sell it to you, and I'll charge him for it. How's that? One that thing before we quit. All right, go. Uh, let's all remember the Gardner family. Prayers for the Gardner family. Misty. Misty Gardner. They're having a tough time with this. I talked to, or I text back and forth with Dickie. He said she had a rough time. But he did ask for continued yep. prayers, and that's, that's, that's a big thing. Misty, I can still remember her jumping over the rail at the Cal Sonic because there was a lady come off a horse. She was the first one on the ground. Fine people. Hey, yeah, good people. can't beat them. Thank you. Yes, sir. We'll be back in a moment. I tell you what, that, that, I, I like going out to Lane Leverage because you never know who you're going to run into. Talked to Tim Webb the other day. I didn't think we was ever going to get in front of a camera. But uh, he finally got in there, and, and Tim's just a super good guy. He's great with horses. Now we're going to talk about some lost shows. And uh, this is something that we need to address, look at. More people need to get together and bring some of these shows back. I've even talked to a gentleman this morning. We talked about if Eagleville couldn't have one, that we go down to Hall's Mill. That, that's a place to have one. But right here is... This one's Dunlap. I mean, this one's uh, Summertown. This is a great place. I can remember going there and look at the prices on those desserts. Tell me you can't do, you cannot do better than that. But this was, this was, like I say, this was years ago. We're thinking this was back somewhere in 15 or 16. There's them ladies running from the cameras. 
But I tell you what, these are just great classes, good classes, some great people out there. And I'm, I'm just going to let you know some of the horses that used to show back then. Now th this is this is something you used to have. George Ann Pratt on Samsung, Pam Henderson on Admission is a Dollar, Duke Thorson, my black Cadillac, and that was that was his daughter, Allison, Bruce McDonald. That's where wife, she would be the one that rides the phenom. Cheryl Crawford, command on parole. Gail Holcomb, he's by the blue. Molly Walters. This, this is just something that these people have been showing for years. Love to go to different shows and, and get involved in these old shows. This is where a lot of them built up to before they went to the celebration. Now everybody knows who that is. They can tell by the way that head's jumping. Justin Harris. But they, these were good times. They really were. They were. Not that we're not having good times now, but these old shows, you look at the people all around the rail, people in the stands, this is the Tennessee walking horse and the way we was. Here's the Eagle Bowl Lion Club. I can remember, this is 2009. I can remember having a workout. I can remember, I think it was 27 or 28, came in in the, uh, country pleasure class. I mean, they was draped out all around the rail. These are times that, that I'd love to see come back. I really would, because we used to have so much fun. Everybody getting involved, screaming and yelling. Now that was 2009 down in Eagle Bowl. And you're talking, this is 2022. But I'd love to see the show uh, down at Hall's Mill. There's Lucky Collins. Yep, Lucky was showing in 2009. We're going to be doing an interview with uh, Lucky before long, her and some of the other ladies in the industry, because we've got a lot of good ones. A lot of them just love the show, love to get out. Love to ride them horses. Maybe we're lacking the sound. These are some old ones that we went back and got out of the archives. There we go. Now we got some sound. Petersburg. Now here's one that I always, I can remember being at Petersburg when it got cool, when that sun went down, and you could see the steam coming up off the horses while they was in the lineup. Everybody knew who that was, that's Jeff Lachlan. tell you this people all around the ring these are just great times you pull up in the park get out ride your horse that's why I'd love to see these shows come back Petersburg is another one that has gone to the wayside that they got a great ring 
had great facilities down there, good parking, easy in, easy out. Some of the horses of yesteryear are just unbelievable. The white mass plays something country. Godfather by Ultra Copy, which we know went on to win multiple world championships and world grand championships in the youth and open and amateur division. Made to look, Jose's Starstruck, Prime Poison, Gold Sovereign. Here's your youth Lebanon underclass. These are the good times, good shows. There are a lot of y'all out there looking at this and recognize these riders and what they're doing. And I'm gonna tell you, it's nothing like it. You're just going back to your, your, your pony class. Some of these old guys. There's Blaze. Excuse me. Now, this is one I would really, really love to see come back. This was in 2017, which was only five years ago. It looks like Kendra Myers there. shows are fun. You pull up, park at ringside, get out and sit, watch what's going on, see everybody out there. Just a great way. There's Linda Gerard. I recognize some of them, some of them I know. There's Debbie Eichler. Well, there's Jeff Green. There's Charlie Green. Bill Bobo.
shows that bring back fond memories of all the people that used to come to the show. Some of them are still coming. Some of them have gone on to other things. But it would be great if we could just get back to uh, having a, multiple shows out here, getting everybody involved, getting her done. We got more video for you, but first we're going to take a short commercial break for our sponsors, and we will be right back. See you in just a moment. You made the time and the sacrifice to broaden their horizons, to see their smiles, but mostly to make lifelong memories. We think it's time to do it again, just the two of you. Don't let illness or injury slow you down. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi-night shows, sibling and progeny searches, Ryder Cup standing, stallion reports. They even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walking horsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much. Let's get back to Jerry and his guests on Water Horse. All right. We're going to run one more segment here where I'm going to name a bunch, and I mean a bunch of horses, and as you hear their names, just ask yourself, are they still showing? Because some of the video that we're going to show is from years ago. So before we go, just listen real close and see if you recognize any of the horses and who's riding. Let's go. Everybody remembers this one. This is your old one. Jose, Jose, 1998 two-year-old world grand champion. Jose, Breeding Jose, at Sugar Creek. Here's your three-year-old Stallion World Championship, or Stallion World Champion class. All the way back to 1999. Chad's getting her done. Jose Jose, three-year-old world champion. Generator Santana, 1997. She's your trainer show grand champion. Santana and Jackie McConnell. Here's your world grand champion, 
1997. He came right back. He won the trainer show. There he is, 1997 World Grand Champion, Generator Santana and Jackie McCollum. He's putting on the Ritz. 1993 fun show, two-year-old. Everybody can recognize that man in the saddle. The legend, Jimmy McCullough. Billy Griffin. <laughs> Tell you what, Billy was... He was something else. There, Tim Gray. Putting on Ritz and Sammy Day.
Johnson on the entry Atlanta, Georgia, and Shelbyville. Right here's one, the specialist in Susan Gordon. Very special lady to the industry right here. I had the opportunity to ride this horse, which just tickled me pink. The specialist. This was a very special lady. Russ Thompson once said that she was the most unassuming lady he had ever met in his life, which is a compliment to anyone. Hope you enjoyed this week's show. I do want to remind you that on February the 5th at St. Sugar Creek in Shelbyville, Tennessee, the first look starting at 10 a.m., catered by Rowdy Ranch, David Williams will be hosting what he's called the first look. Horses, just bring your horses that you want people to see. He's not limited it to just horses by their studs, which I think is a great thing. Call David at 931-639-1081. And then on the 19th of February, you can go out to Lane Leverett's and see his barn party. He's going to be serving a few Bloody Marys and some brunch, as he calls it. There's no telling what he'll be serving. But I grant you this, if you're out there, if they bring any of their horses out, you're going to see some good ones. I want to thank everybody for joining in and tell Tommy I hope his visit to the doctor went well. And we will see everybody again next week right here on What a Horse, regular time, regular station. I do want to tell you that our YouTube channel now YouTube has 4 million subscribers to the YouTube, so that's something else. Wish y'all a good weekend. See you next week. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shoot it to the right, shoot it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.